Hello, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and in this video I'm going to be showing you, bear with me, let me just find it, how to make this. Well, we're going to be having a go at doing a little bit of journaling but in a sort of illustrative style. Go with what you know, you know. <laughs> so we're going to take this little mouse on a bit of an adventure and hopefully by the end of 12 months you and I might have a nice little story that we can share with somebody. It's worth saying that if you want a front cover to it, then perhaps leave a couple of pages before so that you can do something there. Um, anyway, enough chat from me. Silly me. Enough chat from me. Come with me. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, we're going to be starting off with some DL Multifarious card and the Elements Ink Sundance and a size 9 stencil brush. And I'm just blending, almost looks like I'm doing the sun. And now we're going back in again once we've done that with some Elements Ink Green Sleeves. And I'm just going to blend the two colours together. So the main focus of this is in the centre of that DL card we're going to want a yellow and on the outside some green sleeves. And now I'm going back in with some graphite ink just on the edges of the card on the left hand side. Okay, so we're just prov providing if you like a little bit of a frame on the left. So and a little bit at the top. And now some mermaid, just to just give it a slightly different edge. And we're going into some of that green as well. Just lifts the colour. Okay, put that to one side and get the Hobbit Door Large Stamp and some Versafine Clem Nocturne ink and stamp that onto some multifarious card of whatever size you want. We're cutting it down. And we've got some Elements Ink Mermaid and I've spritzed some water into the lid and using a watercolour brush I'm just slowly building up the colour on that door. And I'm just going to do the top, the bottom and a couple of bits on the outside in this before I switch to another colour. So here we go, this is the green sleeves, and I'm going down the centre with that, slowly blending it into each other. A little bit of mermaid going back on there. And with the green sleeves, I'm going into the mossy pebbles around the outside of the house. And a little bit on the door frame as well. But now we've gone to truffle, Elements Ink Truffle, for the very outside edge of the door. Just building it up. That's what's so lovely with this stamp. It's all there for you. You can just follow the lines. Fab. So again, all I've done with that is a little bit of water in the lid with some of the colour. And this is the graphite. Now I have put some water on my brush and I've gone in with some graphite just to give a different, slightly darker tone to the white, if you like. There we go. A little bit of interest. Oh, I'm interested. What's going on? So we have the small caddy zigzag cards. And this door is going on top of one of those. The intention being that someone can open the door and see what's inside. So we need to work out how big or how small we're going to cut that piece of card that's got the door on down to. So I'm just laying it flat, working it out where the actual door is and drawing around it. And that is going to be my guide. So I will now cut that Still a little bit large, so I'll cut that down again to the last line. And now we're going to work on the zigzag. 
So Elements Ink Sundance. We're just going to colour in this zigzag. Again, size 9 stencil brush. Starting darker on the right hand side and slowly blending out to a paler yellow. Love Sundance, it's such a cheerful colour. Like a little ray of sunshine. There we go. So I'm just blotting some of the excess colour because I've just, if you think, oh, that hasn't blended quite as well, just spritz some water on it like I'm doing there. Get some paper towel and just take some of the colour away until you're happy. Right, again, multifarious card, Versafine Claire Nocturne, and I've just stamped Tilly from the Tilly and Tango set. And I want them to look like they're leaning over. So again, I'm working out the size of that caddy card. Just squaring it off there. And I'm going to cut it to size. There we go. I'm just drawing my line and instead of cutting, I'm going to tear it because I don't actually want all these straight lines. And I have to say, I can't cut straight anyway. So let's rip it. And oh, let's rip some more. Hurrah. So there we go. Ripping some multifarious card again. I just love the unfinished line. It's so much smoother, she says, with a giant dog leg in the middle of that. But, you know, it, it's just, it's an organic line, isn't it? It's lovely. Right, so that bit will go there. We want basically two small bits and one long bit there. And now we're going to stick down with some bibbidi-bobbidi glue. bibbidi bop I can't sing because I'll get told off. bibbidi bobbity glue. And I'm smudging it in with my finger because I don't like putting things down and then suddenly getting a squidge of glue on the outside because that happens all too often. Here we go. You remember me saying one long bit too small? Well, this is... There we go. That's the second small bit and that's going at the front. So you get a nice movement. <laughs> oh, dear me. So I was just filling in some of the yellow, some of the white bits with some yellow Sundance. Now I've got the pebble stencil out because I wanted to, cre to ground, to create a ground if you like, and I'm using Elements Ink Graphite, a size 9 stencil brush and the pebble stencil so that when it opens out, Tilly is actually on the ground. Okay, Elements Ink Green Sleeves on three sides and on the remaining two bits we want some graphite. Fab. And there is your door. So for this bit I'm just going to add something for you to pull on, if you like. Now, I'm using some of the hemp string um, that we have, but you can use whatever you want. You know, if you've got embroidery thread or, I don't know, you just want to use a piece of paper, go ahead, do. All I've done is I've put some glue on a little piece of paper and tucked my string inside it and just let it set. Now I'm using some Posca pens just to liven up the floor around Tilly because Tilly is actually disappearing off into somewhere rather exciting. So it's got to start looking exciting really. So that's why the extra colour there. And we've got some water and some graphite just to darken the floor under Tilly's feet. And I'm using a paintbrush here just because I quite like it not to look like my writing. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing very lightly and then I'm going to go over it with a black Posca pen. 
And I find brushes can sort of give you a bit more of a sweep. Anyway, going over it, as I said, follow me. And sometimes, you know, you can change your writing just by adding um, circles or coloured in circles on the end of each bit of your letter. You can see how I've done on the F. There's a circle at the top and one at the bottom. And on the O's, one at the top and at the bottom. It just changes your writing. Now, I haven't added any extra ink to my stencil brush here. I am literally just giving it a quick um, brush over to give a light touch. I think that's fab. And I'm just going to do a little bit more there. And with some bibbidi bobbidi glue, Put another piece of string there. Now the idea of this is that the two strings can be joined together so you can keep it closed. If this doesn't appeal to you that's fine. You can use a bulldog clip. Now do you remember me saying earlier that I did a little bit of bibbidi bobbidi glue and a tab of paper over the string? Well that's what I'm showing you there. There we go. Now I'm going to work on the page itself. So that's that piece that we did earlier, the DL card. And do you remember me saying I was just going to rip the edges? And there you go again. I've <laughs> just ripped another edge. And I'm rubbing in that glue and firmly placing it on the left-hand side of my page. And that says it all, doesn't it? Let's have a ripping good time. So I've got my dreamscape papers and I've gone for the greens because I like those greens. And I've left the two pages together and I'm ripping them both at the same time. So there's page, there's the first bit that I've ripped. And I'm going to rip some more. And I'm just placing it at the moment so that I get an inkling of what I want to do and I'm just building up a landscape, really. So there we go. We have decided that that bit is definitely going there. So over it goes to be my page edge. And that's going over there. Try and get it as close to the edge as possible. Anything that goes over can, of course, be cut. And I'm just layering up in a sort of hillish way. And I have to say, you know, there is no such thing as perfect in this. I believe it's our imperfections that make what we do perfect. There we go, there's Tilly. Now, there's a reason why that multifarious card was there. It's so we had a nice surface to stamp on. And also, the yellow draws your eye, doesn't it? So I've ripped a whole load of little strips, and I'm putting the front and the back. Here we go. This is me ripping. <laughs> rip, rip, rip. So I've got a collection of vines, really, I suppose. And I'm just sticking them down with bibbidi bobbidi glue. And if you like, they act as little arrows pointing down as if to say there's action happening down here. And I don't want that to go all the way over because I am going to do some stencil work on that side as well. I wonder if that's what we're going to do now. Oh, no, we're going to add texture to our landscape with the pebble stencil and some graphite ink and a size nine stencil brush. Now, I've started using the stencil foliage over there on the top left, and I'm just going to extend that yellow going over our ripped paper because it just gives it this lovely unity. Unifies all the colours that we've already used and creates this lovely lush background. A little bit of graphite at the top to frame it. 
before we start on any stencil work. So it says here, adding depth to the top. What on earth do I mean? Ah, here comes the foliage stencil. And I'm just using graphite. And a size 9 stencil brush. And just on the right hand side, I'm just picking out bits with that stencil. Going over the top of the bits that we've ripped. Now this one says pull. What can they mean? So, here I am drawing around the shape of our door caddy card. Do you remember? Just on a piece of multifarious card. And I'm colouring that in with Elements Ink Sundance. Just nothing too fancy, just making it yellow. And closer to the right hand edge, I'm stamping Tilly and making it lean over. Now you can see there's an arrow there. That's showing you where I want to create a bend. And the second bend is by Tilly's ear. There we go. So I've created two creases and I'm going to fold it so that the leg is over the head. Now you can see I'd already done a test piece and the reason I did that was sometimes I can get a bit inky so I make sure I've done at least one or two so that I've got one I can definitely use. So we're just creating a little arrow Using that pebble stencil again, getting some more of that texture for the floor. And again, I'm creating a pull tab. So again, going in with that twine, string, hemp, string. Creating a knot on both ends. I usually do three strands of this. And then a little bit of paper over the top. Bibbidi bob Oh, hello, it's jumpy little bit of paper that I've actually loosened up a bit because they can be quite stiff card, can't they? So I've just given it a bit of a, wait for it, wiggle and stressed it a bit so that it bends nicely. Now this says it's a sign. <laughs> what can I mean? Multifarious card. Guess what? I'm not going to cut. I'm going to do that. You got it. Rip. Rip both edges. I'm just going to stress the edges a bit with a pair of scissors and I'm going into the centre of those sides just so that I can take the middle bit out and I'm using Elements Ink Truffle and giving it a basic brush over with a stencil nine, uh, no st stencil brush size nine. Get your teeth in mother. There we go. A little bit dark around the edges, but I'm going to go in again with a with some water on my watercolour brush. And as the edges are torn, it's got something to to sit in. Right, Lavinia stamp stamp. I only want the word Lavinia, so I have literally only inked up that. There you go. Now with a black Posca pen, I'm just writing Tours. And giving a couple of, if you like, nails on the side and a bit of an underline. Jolly good. That was the sign. Ooh, adding texture accents. What can I mean? I know what I'm doing. With the stencil that I like, the pebble, I'm just covering up the bits I don't want it to go on. And you see the torn edges? Just giving it a little bit of a lift with that. Now I've got another sign that I've quickly created, just like, exactly like I did with the first one. And I'm making a fence post. And that says, with black Posca pen, this way. 
and I'm colouring in the left side and leaving the right side open to the elements. Sticking it down with bibbidi bobbly glue. And now I'm, I've just worked out what I wanted to say in pencil. And I've gone over it in a rather scrappy writing because I love that. As long as people can read it, you know, and some water on a watercolour brush. And I'm just going up the underneath of a couple of letters to smudge it about a bit. And then, will you stop playing with the sign? I was in the middle of an and that there we go. With some of that black Posca that I've got on my craft mat, I'm just flicking up some bits of grass. Don't want lots of it. But there should be something else. Ah, I'm underlining with very pale Posca and some water. And I've got some black Posca there and I've splattered it. Love it. Now, right, so this is Tilly, the one that we made to be pulled. And she's now got with black Posca pen this way. And I'm just going to write pull there and I'll leave that to dry for a bit. You can't leave it alone, Emma Jo. Come on, step away. Now, looking divine. I think there's a clue. Ah, we're going in with some vine. So we're doing a bit of stamping with some marine kelp using Warm Breeze, Versafine Claire Warm Breeze, just over the top, not all over the top of it, just on the right-hand side. Give us a bit of definition. Finishing touches. What have we got? There goes the sign for the Lavinia Tours. Glued down with bibbidi bobbidi glue. A little bit of glittery yellow Posca pen. Don't forget we're heading into something wonderful. I'm going around the outside of the door frame as well there. And on the doorknob itself because it just catches the light and adds a little bit of magic. Subtle, but it's there. And we're doing some there as well. Now, you can add some stickles glue, like icicles or stardust, and I'd do that on the right-hand side of Tilly, just to give her a massive boost of glitter and bling. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Add some glitter with your finger. Be quite liberal, but don't forget to let it dry <laughs> before you close it. There's the Posca pen, just making sure that our Lavinia Tours sign is actually on a post. And there we go, my friends. You've done it. Well done. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed doing this. I don't know about you. I mean, I have added a couple of bulldog clips here just because I didn't want this to take up too much space when stored. So when you're when you're reading this with somebody, the ideal thing to do would be to take those bulldog clips off. And you know what? I'm all for stuff like that, especially if, for example, you were using this with a child, because it's all about interacting with the story. And the more you can get the person to do, the more they engage with it, which is fabulous. So don't forget, we've made a little pull. Which is this way. And then we have the door. Come, follow me, which I think is fab fun. Don't forget to close the door on your way out. Right, my lovelies, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where we're going to take these Mises on their next adventure. I think we might have a little bit of a clue here in that it's Lavinia Tours. You never know, do you? Anyway, see you next time. Thank you very much for coming with me. Hope you've enjoyed yourself. If you've got any comments you'd like to make about this tutorial, please don't hesitate to pop them in the post below and I will do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. You take care and have fun. See you again. Bye.